Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome back to The Correct Views. Sam I.B. DeGangi reporting for The Media Speaks, and uh, we're going to get right into the news as always. I do want to ask you to do me a favor real quick as I do this. Um, you might be watching this on Facebook, and you probably like the link. Thank you so much. Do me a favor, though. When you click on it, there will be an option to click YouTube and go to the actual YouTube video. Go ahead and uh, give it an up like there. The reason I say that is I have been seeing more views now than I've ever seen in the past. Um, I mean, coming in hundreds. And I'm very thankful, by the way. Um, coming in droves, some of them have been leaving dislikes. And I know it's for one of two reasons, because I've heard about it. One is that people hate the camera. The old camera died. Things happen. I can't do much about it. Uh, the correct views on Hotmail.com, all money you give to me goes to a better show. Um, camera issues are what they are. The big one is this. I'm going after General Electric. And there are people that have their money in stock. These are the kinds of people that would like to leave me a thumbs down because I am telling everyone to pull out of GE stock. And if you are in a mutual fund that GE is part of, pull out of that mutual fund, go to an infrastructure mutual fund or something like that, or invest in gold or anything that does not have General Electric in it. And for those of you that don't know, General Electric is TEPCO that caused the meltdown that is poisoning the entire west coast of the country. Not to mention what it's doing to the women, men, and children in Japan. Um, so, again, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to shy away from that. Pull your money out of GE. I, am, I would never be part of a mutual fund that had GE in it. And uh, so do me a favor. Leave me a thumbs up. And it increases the number of people that see the show, by the way. I don't really care if people thumbs me up or down. Do I look like the kind of the guy that cares? No. But it does help me to get the information out. And this is important information. I care about people. That's why I'm doing this. And I want to thank you for watching me do it. All right, guys. Paul Joseph Watson, Watson Infowars.com. Discovery Channel. Stop worrying about Fukushima radiation. I do my very best to make sure that I keep my credibility. I, uh, you know, you can say whatever you want. I get comments of people saying I have tattoos and I have long hair. If I was saying that I created all of this, I wouldn't expect you to, to listen to me. I never said I was a physicist, but I know how to read the writings of physicists. And I try to source everything I do, because credibility, like I said, is everything. And I mention that because the Discovery Channel, with this story I'm going to read you, has lost a level of credibility that it will probably never get back. Um, it would be like if I said that Obama was acting like a Republican. Um, you would lose so much, well, it kind of is these days, but I mean what Republicans are supposed to be. Um, I would lose all credibility. If I said that uh, Obama was a libertarian, I would lose all credibility. Nobody would ever watch me again. This is the kind of blunder that the Discovery Channel has made, only instead of a blunder that would just be something stupid, like I said. Um, this is a blunder that some people are going to listen to, and they're going to listen to it for two reasons. First of all, they're going to listen to it because they don't want to believe the truth. And the truth is that you cannot live safely on the west coast of California. You cannot live in Hawaii. You cannot live anywhere on the coast, and including Alaska, Oregon, and Washington. They don't want that fact. So if anything, even if it's establishment lies, coming at them is preferable to having to look in the mirror and realize that General Electric has ruined the west coast of the United States. The other reason they're going to believe it is that we live in a very stupid, stupid, stupid time. Uh, some of the dumbest people that ever lived are, are alive right now. But half of them are in our country. The other half are building nuclear reactors in Fukushima. Um, this is bad, people. This is very bad. And um, again, I, I will never look at the Discovery Channel the same way again. This is almost as stupid as when, um, uh, what's his name, Stephen Hawking tried to say that uh, everything popped out of nothing. Uh, this is worse than that. Listen to this. The Discovery Channel has posted a YouTube video urging its viewers to ignore trolls 
and fear mongers and stop worrying about Fukushima radiation. In the clip, host Trace Dominiquez blames a mob for trying to make others believe that deadly radiation from the crippled nuclear power plant could be hitting the west coast of the United States and is responsible for killing animals and sea life. Do me a favor if you doubt this and go back to my video, uh, the massive Fukushima update for January. It's a part one and a part two. And I say that because I have sources for everything that I'm about to say, and they're listed in that. Um, 1,400% increase in radiation on the coast of California. Um, and you're going to hear people give you the lie that, oh, it's no worse than 87 million bananas. That's how much radiation is in them. Right? Let, me, let me explain something. For one thing, uranium and potassium are quite different. For another thing, um, let's say, and I've used this analogy before, so regular listeners, just bear with me. If I have a hot coal sitting on this computer here, and I'm like this, it's going to be enough coal to ruin my desk, keep my hand warm for a while, and um, not really cause any damage. However, if I take the coal and hold it in my hand, I'm probably not going to have much of a hand left, depending on my endurance. That is the difference between being around bananas, which is literally, again, what was said, and being around this kind of radiation. This kind of radiation shortens lives causes you to get more flu, creates uh, heart trouble, thyroid cancer, bone cancer, leukemia, you name it. Okay, these these lies are over. The, the fat lady is singing. Her name is Beyonce. Okay, listen to me. This is very irresponsible on the part of the Discovery Channel. The link with highlights are viral videos showing an individual using a Geiger counter to detect abnormally high levels of radiation on the beach in San Francisco. An act that led public health officials to discover radiation hotspots 1,400 times normal levels. And there is a link on this article as well. That one expert said posed a health risk to young children and babies. As InfoWars reporters who subsequently visited the beach confirmed, authorities have failed to erect warning signs to notify residents that the area is dangerous. In other words, not only do we have a, a public that is stupid enough to go there even if they were warned not to, not even being warned. And this is a repeating occurrence with the Obama administration. Let's remember, uh, they're the ones that didn't have the radiation monitoring uh, working for the uh, soldiers, on our, our boys and girls on the Ronald Reagan. This is the administration that isn't testing our seafood. It wasn't testing it even as the plants were melting through. So this is an ongoing problem with the Obama administration, and now we're seeing more of it. Uh, if he was any kind of president at all, he would be testing everything and warning everyone. Despite experts saying the radiation discovered on the beach was a health risk, which they admitted, the Discovery Channel host blames conspiracy hawks for freaking out about the issue, despite admitting that background radiation on the beach is seven times normal level. Why would you worry about that? The video concludes with Dunning with claiming yeah, that the Fukushima nuclear power plant, which one scientist recently warned could prompt the complete evacuation of the west, west coast of North America, poses no threat whatsoever to Americans or even fish and sea life in the Pacific Ocean. Let me tell you what you're going to see. They did this in Tokyo, and you're going to find that the people in Tokyo are going to be leading the world in cancers in big cities in 15 years. And you're going to find in 15 years that the west coast of the United States, particularly this area, is leading America in cancer and heart issues. It's going to happen. If you stay there, it's going to happen. You can call me a conspiracy hawk all you want to, but I know how to read a physics book. The video concludes that Dominic was claiming that the Fukushima nuclear power plant, oh, I already read that. His attitude towards the issue in scoffing at those concerned over Fukushima radiation mirrors the established rhetoric. However, while sidelining the matter, authorities are simultaneously preparing for radiation threats. Yesterday, it was announced that 19 different government and academic bodies would begin testing sea kelp forests across California in an effort to detect radiation from Fukushima. 
The U.S. Department of Health and Human Services also recently ordered 14 million doses of potassium iodide. The DHS is also flying uh, helicopters over major cities to measure background radiation. Uh, I'll probably be getting to that story soon. Um, it's cheaper to, to have a radiation monitor just posted. Just doing it in a helicopter's thing is uh, nefarious to some degree. It, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, second of all, it can't be overstressed that potassium iodide and nasian iodine, um, what it does for your thyroid is prevents the uptake of uh, I think cesium along with other nucleides into your thyroid. It does not protect you from uh, every cancer that comes from radiation. It is not the magic pill that makes you safe from radiation. But having said that, you wouldn't want to not have it in the event of a problem. And if there's 14 million doses of potassium iodide ordered by the DHS, then they are at least mildly concerned that they're going to topple that reactor at a four before they get this done. And again, we've gone over ad nauseum how bad that can be. Experts have concluded that the radioactive plume from the nuclear accident in March 2011 will reach U.S. coastal waters by 2014. For you Kesha fans, it is 2014. Fish recently caught off the coast of Fukushima Prefecture measured 124 times the radioactive level considered safe for human consumption. Discovery Channel. Mysterious die-offs of numerous different animals, birds, and sea life have been linked to Fukushima. To claim that the ongoing Fukushima crisis poses no danger, it goes on, whatsoever to the Pacific Ocean is patently ludicrous. When Yachtsman Ivan McFadden traveled across the Pacific Ocean, please listen to this, don't zone out. From Japan to San Francisco, he was shocked to discover that an area he once saw teeming with life was now a dead zone. Anybody ever hear about a third of the waters being poisoned? To those of you that uh, know what Revelations is, you don't have to believe in it, but according to it, a third of the water dies, then a third of us die. Um, if you don't believe in the Bible, it stands to reason that if a third of the water was poisoned, a third of us would die. Well, after we left Japan, it felt as if the ocean itself was dead, McFain told Newcastle Herald. We hardly saw any living things. We saw one whale sort of rolling helplessly on the surface with what looked like a big tumor on its head. It was pretty sickening. Um, Mikhail Phelan did an article about the conjoined whales. We've never seen that before. When, when is the last time you ever saw a picture of a whale with a tumor on its head? You don't see them in, they're not saying the Atlantic Ocean, the Indian Ocean, the Arctic Ocean. You, you're not hearing about it. Do whales go to the Arctic Ocean? Leave a comment. Um, we hardly saw any living things. I've done a lot of miles on the ocean in my life, and I'm used to seeing turtles dolphins, sharks, and big flurries of feeding fish. But this time, for 3,000 nautical miles, there was nothing alive to be seen, he added, concluding. The ocean is broken. Can you be more clear? Okay, what's the Discovery Channel doing? Discovering how stupid you can be? There's no life in the Pacific Ocean. The floor of the Pacific Ocean is... It's, it's like a boneyard. They've never seen anything like it, ever. It would be completely naive to believe that public health authorities in the United States would not, whether deliberately or through incompetence, mislead the American people on major health issues. Well, I can believe that. I mean, Obama's supposed to be a constitutional lawyer, and he's done more to hurt the Constitution than anyone, so it could be uh, incompetence. I doubt it. Aside from TEPCO and Japanese officials continually lying and downplaying the severity of the Fukushima crisis, lest we forget that when the EPA told Ground Zero workers not to worry about breathing the toxic air in 9-11, that resulted in 20,000 of them suffering debilitating and in some cases fatal illnesses. Um, it says that there was a false claim that there were no deaths or long-term effects connected to the accident at Three Mile Island. I'm going to get to that in a minute. The nuclear power plant was also based on deceptive assurances made at the time by authorities that levels of radiation emitted were harmless. In reality, cancer rates in children and infants living in Dolphin County, that's where uh, that's in Pennsylvania, where Three Mile Island happened in the 70s, 
um, it's located there significantly higher than the national average. I'm going to tell you something else, and I learned this from Helen Caldicott. Never eat Hershey's. Under any circumstances, don't ever eat Hershey's. Because they never moved the chocolate factory after the Three Mile Island accident. Ever seen Poltergeist? You didn't move the bodies! Um, they didn't move the candy factory away. So, all, all, all Hershey's candy is radioactive to some degree. The more you eat, the worse it is. And Helen Caldicott said the way she can prove this is that Hershey's has never once dared to fight her on this because she has the data to destroy them. And uh, I believe her on this. Again, and it matters of like she's a big greeny weenie. She's kind of a nutcase in some ways. But when Helen Caldicott speaks about radioactivity, you shut up and listen because she's one of the best that ever lived. Um, it, it also took scientists 24 years to conclude that Chernobyl and Russia, the nuclear disaster in 86, was responsible for one million cancer deaths, as well as numerous other diseases amongst both humans and animals. Did you hear that? There's a million people that have died of cancer since 1986 due to Chernobyl. Now, how many were made sick? Probably another million. Numerous governments, including the French government, deliberately suppressed information about the spread of radioactive fallout as a result of Chernobyl. So we have proof of governments in the West lying to its own people. That's why I'm reading this. In parts of France, thyroid cancer surged as the population didn't take steps to protect itself because they believed the government, they believed their government when they said that the radiation cloud was harmless. So friends, get potassium iodide and get Get the hell off the West Coast. Uh, that went a little long, but I'm going to go with it, friends, because news is important. I'm just going to zip through it uh, to get it out there. I want to make sure that it reaches people. So please hit share. TheFreeThoughtProject.com. This is great. How to stop cops from searching your car. Uh, I'm just going to go to the points here real quick. Always be calm and cool. If, a pol if the police flag you down, pull over immediately, turn off your car, and place your hands on the wheel. Police like to see your hands for their own safety. So wait until they request your paperwork before reaching for it. At night, it's also a good idea to turn on the dome light so that the officer can see that you're not armed. If you're allowed to carry your weapon, of course, you have to let the officer know as soon as he speaks to you. Always greet policemen and policewomen as officers. For example, you may start off with, good afternoon, officer. How's it going today? Under no circumstances should you ever backtalk or raise your voice or use profanity with a police officer. Being hostile with police is stupid and dangerous if you can't win that game. If the officer writes you a ticket, accept it quietly and never complain. Listen to any instruction on paying the fine or contesting the ticket and drive away slowly. Remain silent. What you say can't hurt you. It says police may try to get you to admit that you've broken the law. For example, an officer may ask, do you know how fast you were going? You may assert your Fifth Amendment protection against self-incrimination by refusing to admit that you might have broken the law. As such, the best answer and to the similar question is no, officer. Because anything you say can and will be used against you in court, the less you say, the better. You also don't want to announce to police that you know your rights. That will, that will be read by them as a challenge. Just keep quiet and calm. In other words, you know your rights. You don't have to announce it to the world. Uh, you have the right to refuse search requests. Police may order the driver or any passengers out of the vehicle. If this happens, step out of the car. If they have reasonable suspicion to detain you, police may frisk the outside of your clothing to check for weapons, but only if they have a basis for suspecting that you're armed. If the police detain and frisk you, you have the right to clearly state your refusal to consent of the search. For example, you may say, Officer, I am not resisting. I do not consent to this search. But you should only verbally refuse, never physically resist. Just touching an officer could get you tasered or beaten. You could also get a felony charge for assaulting the officer, so it's important to remember that. Um, whether they frisk you or not, it says police may ask you a series of questions. They will probably include something like, you don't mind if I have a look in your car. Beware of that question. It's a legal loophole that the officer wants to snare you in. It might even sound like a command, but it's technically a request. 
In response to the request, you may politely decline by saying, Officer, I know you're just doing your job, but I don't consent to any searches. Some officers may, want, may use their authority to make you feel obligated to prove your innocence by asking, What do you have to hide? Don't fall for such tricks. If necessary, repeat your refusal. Remember, the Fourth Amendment protects your right to refuse search requests, but it doesn't require police to tell you that you have the right to refuse. In fact, consenting to searches automatically makes them legal in the eyes of the law. So if you're pulled over, don't try to figure out whether or not the officer has probable cause to legally search you. You always have the right to refuse searches. Refusing a search request is not an admission of guilt and does not give the officer the right to search or detain you. In fact, most avoidable police searches don't occur because police have probable cause. They occur because people get tricked or intimidated into consenting to search requests. So don't do it! If the police search your car and find illegal items despite your refusal, your lawyer can fire a motion to suppress, that is throw out, the evidence in court. If the judge agrees that the officer's search violated the Fourth Amendment's probable cause requirements, she will grant the motion. Unless the prosecution has evidence, your charges would be dismissed. How did the judge become a chief? Determine if you're free to go. Unless you're detained or arrested, you may terminate your the encounter at any time. But don't wait for the officer to dismiss you. Ask if you're free to go. For example, if an officer threatens to call in a canine unit, if you refuse a search, you could ask the officer, Officer, are you detaining me or am I free to go? Not only can this line help you withdraw from the encounter, it also deflects any of the officer's probing questions or threats. So if the officer says, if you cooperate with me, everything will go easy for you, you may respond by saying either, officer, I don't consent to any searches, or officer, am I free to go? If the officer lets you leave, do so immediately. If the officer's answer is unclear, or if he asks additional questions, persist by repeating, officer, am I free to go? Lastly, ask for a lawyer. If you are free to go, you are being detained. If you are not free to go, you are being detained. The officer might have some reason to suspect you of a crime, and you may be arrested. In such a situation, your magic words are, I'm going to remain silent, I would like to see a lawyer. These magic words are like a legal condom. They're your best protection if you're under arrest. Never rely on police to inform you of your right to remain silent and see a lawyer. Repeat the magic words as necessary, but say no more. Remember that anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. Um, this is from InfoWars, Anthony Pucciardi, new commander purge, another 34 missile launch officers terminated by the Air Force. I'm not going to read the whole article here, I just told you where to find it, but this, I'm going to let you know what's going on because it's important. History lesson here. In Rome, in order to secure uh, the um, the outcomes they wanted, whether it hurt the people or not. They manipulated the armies from the inside, and they broke many laws to do it. Um, Greek, the Greeks created democracy. They had the same problem. I know we're not in democracy. You get the point. Um, the most famous, of course, was Hitler, when he went ahead and broke so many laws in the German constitution in order to take over the military. And of course he burnt down the Reichstag, which was like the Congress. Well, and he purged all political adversaries from his country and bragged about it. You can even look it up on YouTube. Well, our country is firing all of the nuclear, uh, the, nu the entire nuclear command for the country. There's been some question about Nuclear weapons being stolen and moved to South Carolina. Um, there's been multiple concerns that there was some kind of a false flag about to go off. Look, if somebody undermines our government, which obviously is happening, they can stage a nuclear explosion with a bomb and blame it on any enemy they want. Then they can not only go to war, but they have just decimated thousands, if not millions, of lives in doing so. It's called a false flag. 
And I'm mentioning it because I want all of you to look it up. Again, I mean, it, it's a very long article, but the gist of it I just gave to you. Um, it says it was revealed in the mainstream media reports that the government did not want to use suspensions or firings. They didn't even want, to, they didn't even want these to go on record anywhere. Nowhere at all. But when you've got nuclear weapons that are like moving around without anybody knowing where they are for purposes that no one's even sure of, you've got to wonder what kind of problems you could be running into here. You don't just move nuclear weapons. A lot of papers need to be signed. And, uh, I mean, obviously, it doesn't just happen. So I'm going to put the story out there. Am I saying that somebody was trying to set off a nuclear weapon? No. But this is exactly what you would do if that was what you were trying to do. So, I mean, let's pressure the good people in Congress, like Rand Paul, Justin Amish, to, to do everything they can to ensure that we know where all of our nukes are at all time and what their purposes are and what their statuses are. Um, this is from uh, the Wall Street Journal online. America's dwindling economic freedom. Will economic freedom has reached record levels according to the 2014 Index of Economic Freedom released Tuesday by the Heritage Foundation in the Wall Street Journal. But after seven straight years of decline, the U.S. has dropped out of the top ten most economically free countries. Is anybody surprised by this? Um, I have a business plan drawn up to open up a club, but we're, we're so restrained here that unless you're already rich, you can't do it. For 20 years, the index was measured a, has measured a nation's commitment to free enterprise on a scale of 0 to 100 by evaluating 10 categories, including fiscal soundness, government size, and property rights. These commitments have powerful effects. Countries achieving higher levels of economic freedom consistently and measurably outperform others in economic growth, long-term prosperity, and social progress. Botswana, for example, has made gains through low tax rates and political stability. In other words, the system that is outlined in our Constitution is the system and that is the most economically viable for the most number of people. What we are experiencing is an economic environment that is only viable for the very, very rich, the elite, the 1%, as they're called. Those losing freedom, on the other hand, risk economic stagnation, high unemployment, and deteriorating social conditions. For instance, the heavy-handed government intervention, raid socialism, in Brazil's economy continues to limit mobility and fuel a sense of injustice. It's not hard to see why the U.S. is losing ground. Even marginal tax rates exceeding 43% cannot finance runaway government spending, which has caused the national debt to skyrocket. I have an ad in my face. The Obama administration continues to shackle entire sectors of the economy with regulation, including health care, finance and energy, the intervention that impedes both personal freedom and national prosperity. The U.S. languishes, other countries have leaped ahead thanks to policies that enhance economic freedom. Um, our governments in 114 countries have taken steps in the past year to increase economic freedoms for their citizens. 43 countries from every part of the world have now reached the highest economic freedom ranking in the index's history. Hong Kong, of all places, continues to dominate the list, followed by Singapore, Australia, who is getting rid of these ridiculous laws that have to do with global warming because man is not warming the planet, Switzerland, New Zealand, and Canada. These are the only countries to earn the index's economically free designation. Uh, Mauritius earned top honors among African countries, and Chile excelled in Latin America. Despite the turmoil in the Middle East, several Gulf states, including Bahrain, are in designation as mostly free. So what's happening is our country is taking more and more steps to socialism and killing our country, while other nations are doing what America used to do, and they are succeeding. Um, guys, do me a favor. When you're in Canton, Ohio, go to the Arcadian Grill. What you will find there is delicious food, friendly service. Uh, the prices are reasonable. Most things are 10 bucks or under. Their breakfast is amazing, especially I go there on the weekends. You will enjoy every bite that you eat. Uh, they have a full bar, and you get a drink there. It's made right. You've had a water drought, crappy drink, right? Don't have one at the Arcadia Grill. Located on Court Avenue in downtown Camp. 
Friends, at least I've got three more I want to get to at The Guardian. Disease or resistance to antibiotics at tipping point, warns experts. Now, you're going to hear the, uh, the, the line that says, antibiotics are given out too much because antibiotics don't do anything to help a viral infection. That's only partially true. If you have a viral infection that has a lot of mucus, the mucus can attract bacteria. And then guess what you have? A bacterial infection. That is why it's not always a bad idea to take antibiotics for a viral infection. Because by the time the damn doctor wants to give you antibiotics, now you're sick again. Now you have a bacterial infection. So that's why. Um, the way to prevent it, uh, take echinacea twice a day and hit 3,000 milligrams of vitamin C. I get sick like once or twice a year. It lasts like two days, and I use umka to cure it. Um, the problem isn't so much what we're doing there as it is greed. The big drug companies are not creating new antibiotics because that's not where the big money is. So the problem isn't so much that we use too many antibiotics as that we have greedy, greedy antibiotic makers. The director of the, of the Wellcome, and there's two, two L's in this, but I don't think there's meant to be. Wellcome Trust has warned that resistance of disease to antibiotics has reached a tipping point at which it could creep into the UK almost without notice. Professor Jeremy Farr said the effects would be gradual and would be seen not just in resistant new infections, but in everyday medical practice and the treatment of everything from diabetes to minor wounds and at risk of turning septic. Having worked in Vietnam for the past 18 years, Farr said he had already seen firsthand resistance to drugs in the shape of tuberculosis that had spread from patients' lungs to their brain, and that's not good news. This is happening now, Farrer told BBC Radio for today's program. It's been happening for the last decade or so, and more of it will continue to happen. What we see is people actually spending longer in the hospital, patients getting sicker, and having complications and dying, and it will creep up on us almost without us noticing. We will not be the sort of contagion-like event that every the, uh, this will not be the sort of contagion-like event of somebody landing from Hong Kong in London with a pneumonia that is emerging that we've all feared. This will creep up on us insidiously, and of course, that's in many ways more difficult to cope with. He said also that the golden age of antibiotics by complacency had set in the 1970s and 80s when there could have been more investment in antibiotics, could have been used better, for example, in combinations. To, to prevent the development of resistance to them. We're watching evolution happening, he said. Again, that is micro-evolution, not macro. Things do not change species. The viruses, the parasites, have a pressure put on them from the drugs. They want to respond to that by surviving and not being killed by these antibiotics. So therefore, they evolve in ways that make them resistant to them. Farrow said that 20 years ago, there had been 18 companies in the commercial sector working in the field of antibiotics, and now there were just four. And consequently, only new classes of antibiotics had emerged in the last 10 years. Greed! We don't have any new drugs to save our lives because they're too greedy to make them. There's more money in us dying. That's the correct view here. He called for more imaginative ways to incentivize, to incentivize the pharmaceutical industry, for example, through changes to patients and for regulation around clinical tests to be eased. He said access to antibiotics need to be regulated as they are now available over the counter in many countries. That's because in many countries they need to be because of awful sanitary conditions, usually due to socialistic governments. Um, again, the problem is not too many antibiotics. That's BS. The problem is greed. The Daily Sheep will, uh, two more to get to. Eyewitness to Hitler warns, keep your guns and buy more guns. Editor's note here. The warning signs are everywhere. History has shown us exactly what happens to the citizenry of nations who are disarmed by their governments. The comparison between Nazi-controlled Austria and socialist-controlled America are frightening. But this time it's different, right? Because it could never happen in the land of free. Watch the speech, read every word, and share it with friends, family, and those who don't know any better. 
and I'm going to go ahead and read you much of it. But when Katie Wertheman was a little girl in Austria, she witnessed firsthand Adolf Hitler's rise to power and the Soviet communist occupation that followed. She also witnessed, for decades, the distortions of the media when it came to the reporting of the events. From her, in other words, he broke the law like Obama's doing and taking over more and more control and nobody's noticing it. From her eyewitness perspective, Worthman said that the whole thing didn't happen overnight in a brutal attack like the media portrays it, but rather it evolved into a dictatorship gradually over a period of a few years. Does that sound familiar to anyone? Hitler didn't come across as somewhat evil to be feared initially. In the beginning, Hitler didn't look like or talk like a monster at all. He talked like an American politician would. Um, remember, it says Hitler was elected by 98% of the vote. Hitler destroyed the existing medical system. Sound familiar? And he brought a national health care plan into being. Uh, his actually worked a little better. Isn't that sad? First, people were forced to register their guns to cut down on crime like they're trying to do now. Then they were forced to turn them in or risk capital punishment for keeping them, which they will soon do. Um, this is her account. In 1938, the media reported that Hitler rode into Austria with tanks and guns and took us over. That's not true at all, she says. The Austrian people elected Hitler by 98% of the vote by means of the ballot box. Um, oh, yeah, so Obama schlacked Romney, therefore he must be good, right? Now you might, and again, I didn't vote for Romney. Hell no, I voted for Gary Johnson. So don't don't leave me comments about Romney. Now you might ask, how could a Christian nation elect a monster like Hitler? The truth is, truth is that at the beginning, Hitler did not look nor talk like a monster at all. He talked like an American politician. We also had gun registration. All the Austrian people had guns, but the government said the guns are very dangerous. Children are playing for them. Whenever you hear for the children, what they really mean is hose the adults. Um, the hunting accidents could happen, and we could really have total controlled safety. And we had criminals again. And the only way that we could trace the criminal was the serial number of the gun. So it says we dutifully went to the police station and we registered our guns. Not long after, they said, no, it didn't help. I guess we still have problems here. The only way that we won't have accidents and crimes is if you bring your guns to the police station, and then we don't have to worry about any crimes anymore or any accidents. And if you don't do that, capital punishment. So that's why the Jews and uh, the blacks and the Arabs and all the people that were slaughtered didn't defend themselves. That's how he was able to do that, people. So that's what we did. The dictatorship didn't happen overnight. It took five years. Gradually, little by little, step by step, to escalate into a dictatorship. When the people fear the government, that's tyranny. But when the government fears the people, that's liberty. Keep your guns. Keep your guns and buy more of them. God bless her. I hope she lives 100 more years. Uh, last story I'm going to get to, prisonplanet.com. Friends, I got a problem. Sending out dumps caps is expensive. I dropped almost $40 last time. So, guys, here's the way this is going to work. If you really like the Dubs Cap of the Month, I need you to leave me a comment telling me that you like it. And I'm going to need some help on donations because this is getting expensive. For those of you that don't know, I print out a, uh, a paper, an award, proclaiming why they've won the Dubs Cap of the Month. And I send them a Christella handmade Dubs Cap. She's the behind the scenes queen. It's expensive to send a Dubs Cap, depending on where it's going. So if you want it to keep going, let me know that you like it and help me do it. Uh, help me do it at uh, the correct views of hotmail.com. Um, and I'll show receipts. I mean, I'm not out here to take money from people. I'm out here to make a really good show that informs people. All right, guys, fight back. Anthony Gucciardi gives $1,000 to church targeted by government for feeding the homeless. God bless him. Um, and this, this would be nominated. This is why I said that. This will be nominated for the Dutch Cap of the Month Award. But if I do it again this month, I have a good feeling who's going to win. But this was the kind of level of dumb that needed to be mentioned. In what amounts to concerning attack on basic rights, we have told you about the church groups and other organizations that have been targeted and harassed by various government entities simply for feeding the homeless. 
As in the case of Acts 2 Worship Center, which story at least Anthony, Anthony Gucciardi has directly supported to feed even more homeless individuals in the face of opposition, the group was told that they could not even offer free meals to those in need on Thanksgiving Day. See, this is why I'm a Christian, but I stick up for all religions. Uh, I wish, uh, when you start destroying religion, and in this country it's Christianity, when you start destroying religion, you do more than attack a belief system. You end up with very cold-hearted people, and at some point, very cold-hearted people start to be elected to government. Uh, am I saying that all atheists are cold-hearted? No. I'm just saying that when you have a culture based on it, it's never worked. You can be a wonderful atheist. I know many of them. Uh, quite simply, this is beyond what many would consider insanity, and very much so into the dimension of Orwellian. It is for this reason and that it is essential that we draw attention to these matters, as we have achieved recently thanks to the support of story league readers, who have spread the word surrounding and not only the attack on the Acts 2 worship center ability to feed the homeless, but street groups like Crazy Faith as well, a grassroots family-based group that has was halted from delivering 5,000 meals to those in need. You know what? I don't know a single atheist that would be in favor of that. So, yeah, th these people are just vile. Uh, if there was a, we don't care, you know, vile would happen, sickening people. In an effort to encourage others to feed those in need and support those real charities that actually offer the powerful fruit of benevolence to those who need it, Story leaks Anthony Gucci already has provided X2 Worship Center $1,000 for the sole purpose of feeding even more homeless in the face of a tyrannical attack by bureaucratic control freaks. When in doubt, as you can now support the homeless, however, always be aware that the best way to support the needy is to directly offer food, clothing, and other items not cash directly to them. Here is a recent report by Anthony Gucciardi regarding the attack on groups and others who have attempted to feed the homeless, and there's a link to it. That's wonderful what Anthony did. Uh, friends, I'm glad. Christelle, what is Dallas? Is, uh, Dallas won my contest. What is his charity that he likes so much? Uh, she's going to go get it. Friends, you're listening to The Correct Views. Sam I.B. DeGangie signing off. Uh, make sure you go to the mediaspeaks.com. Look at the work of Kyle Court, D. Lake, and myself. We're always posting constant injustice, D Lake for president, Kyle Phillips. Articles are always going up. News things like this go up. When you see them, share them. Go on our YouTube channels. Hit like. It helps us to really get the word out. And uh, what, what's his charity there? Ah, well, I'll have to get to it next week, Dallas. You still have a week of free charity promotion coming to you. Good night, friends. God bless. And thank you for listening to The Correct Views. Share this.